we are live with Lisa Novak no. and Rosie, Rosie Sullivan. Guys, don't fear, Rosie is here. Who is Rosie? She's the lady that clears up all the confusion. Rosie's the cleaner in the industry. Rosie is the college principal director of Australian College of Professionals. When a real estate agent is hurt and on the ground in real estate world, she's the lady that helps and picks them up and dusts yep. them off and gets them going again. And why she's here tonight is because... Boy, oh boy, we've got a lot to cover with Rosie. So yeah. we're going we're gonna to bring Rosie on in just one sec, but we're going to be talking about a whole heap of stuff. So there's a lot of um, uh, talk that is going on about the new reforms. We're going to clear all of that up for all rent. of you real estate peeps. We're going to be rent, talking about rent. rent. How what much happens? can you get off your rent? Is rent going to go up? Is it going to go down? Yeah. What's can I do? I can I not pay rent for six months and can I stay in commercial and residential? And I think we just need to just... just We're just going to clear stuff up. Rosie, how are yeah, you? Nip and tuck. Really well, Lisa and Mark. It's great to be uh, on with you. It's nice to... I haven't, I've heard your voices lately, but... Uh, yeah, good to talk with you. Thanks for putting on your red lippy as well. I know, isn't it lovely? <laughs> Gorgeous. It's, it's a big outing for the week, right? It's it really is. Nice. Big for the week. Lots to talk about. So where do you reckon we start, Rosie? I think there's a few questions that have come in that we, we would like to address with you. I hope that's okay. Yeah, of course. All right, good. Didn't, um, didn't Rosie write these questions? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, they just came in. Just before you start with the question, <laughs> it's really it's honest to people, you know. You know. Sorry, Rosie. Mark keeps talking. What were you saying? There's nothing, nothing new. Um, just going to say that with, we have an industry, and there are basically about forty nine thousand agents in New South Wales, and at the moment, there's forty nine thousand people who are desperately dealing with all of the legislation. And there's yeah. so much that happened all at once. We've had the real estate reforms that came through, which is about how real estate actually works. We've had the new residential tenancies regulations that came through on, both of those came through on the 23rd of March, all in the middle of COVID. So we've got new legislation around COVID and all of that creates the new legislation, the new COVID legislation. I think everybody's getting really confused or more, it's not so much confused, it's overwhelmed, I think. I agree. And you know what happened? I think COVID, I, I, I agree. And I think COVID came along and people, um, I think, feel as though it overtook everything. So when COVID came along, out went colds and flus, out went, um, you know, every other stomach bug and everything. You know, the minute someone has a headache, they got COVID. Um, and then, you know, also people think that that also dismissed all of those industry reforms because COVID came along, that they were no longer going to be in place. True that, or false? Absolutely false. And it was even prior to COVID uh, hitting us so strongly sort of mid-March, uh, you know, Fair Trading had already said that they were going to give the industry, those 49,000 people with licences and certificates of registration, a six-month, I guess, period of warn and educate. So six months for everybody as agents to actually get used to the new reforms, used to all the new laws, and make sure they worked out how to implement them properly into their into their agencies. And of course, when an agent's doing the right thing and implementing the new laws into their agency, they're offering you know a good compliance service to their customers, which is obviously what fair trading is after, because they're they're a consumer affairs body at the end of the day, making sure that you know the consumers are happy with the services that they're getting from whoever, and in this case, it happens to be real estate agents. So there's a six month, I guess, you know, we keep hearing the word moratorium, and I guess it's the same thing for this, that fair trading are not going to come out and start giving people fines or agents fines. Uh, they're going to assist agents to, they're still gonna come out and have a look in agencies, but they're going to assist them to get themselves compliant. Obviously, okay. if they're playing trust money deals off the table, but you know, so there's, there's no grace period, Rosie. It's really that the reforms are well and truly in place as of the end of March. I think it was the 23rd of March they came in. Yes. Okay. 
and that if agents weren't doing all the things that they were meant to be doing as a result of the reforms, fair trading may be somewhat lenient given that COVID-19 is... Has, Lisa, Lisa, it had absolutely nothing to do with COVID-19 whatsoever. Before, this, before COVID took over our lives, fair trading had already said that there, was, there would be a six-month period where they would be lenient and assist agents to get there. Has COVID-19 has had no impact on this whatsoever. It's just what they were always going to do was give that, that six-month period for people to get themselves compliant. Okay. All right. There you go. So that clears it up, guys, because there has been a lot of speculation in the industry saying the reforms, you know, at, like a lot. You know, we, we're speaking with agents all day, every day, and a lot of people are saying, you know, we, uh, it, it, didn't, it didn't actually come about because of COVID. So that is absolutely well and truly false. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to know if you can talk, Rosie. Um, is it a sensible question, Mark? Yes. Please kick me under the table. And ever since you kicked me out of the table, I stopped talking and I just asked her for permission to talk again so you I don't get kicked under the table. I can't guarantee that he won't get kicked under the table during Normally the I'll show. get kicked under the table three to four times. In <laughs> I'm sure he'll tell you when he does. I'm but sure. You can talk. Can I talk? I can't hear him. Relevance to this <laughs> girly talk. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, okay, big one, Rosie. Okay. Where um, the real estate agents, this is where it's really important people to understand that the real estate agents are ambassadors. They're ambassadors of property and the industry. So these people, these agents are a bit like a honeypot and the tenants in the marketplace and the landlords in the marketplace are turning to the ambassadors of property and saying, what do we do? There's a couple of aspects to this I'd like to ask you. I guess as a principal of an agency, uh, we protect an owner's asset. From my side of things, I think we've tried to give our staff strength, which, yeah. have, which, which have then given landlords and tenants confidence and taken panic out of the marketplace. But it still seems that even when you look at your moral compass and even if you look at uh, hardship and stuff like that, there's still a heavy reliance on what does the code say for real estate or what for landlords and tenants. So yeah. even though people are using their moral compass as as agents with their landlords and with their tenants, it's still see everyone really is heavily, heavily reliant on residential rentals. What do we have to do? What is the law? There's yeah. a lot of confusion. So, you know, the, the, obviously there's the new legislation um, during the period. So what can you tell us about it? What's the law? So you're a, you're a landlord, um, you know, what do you want and you're, or you're potentially a tenant, what do you want to hear from your real estate agency as to what the law, what's the interpretation of yeah. the law? Well, the first thing is, is yeah, absolutely. And that's what people want to, that's what landlords and, and tenants want to hear from their real estate agent. You are a professional. You're not the, the common man in the street. You, the real estate agent is the person who should know all of this information. And we, you know, on the 15th of April, so last week, we, um, we got the Residential Tenancies Amendment COVID-19 Regulation 2020. Okay, so that came into play on the 15th of April. And... Yep. I think up until that point, there was a lot of chat. There was, we were hearing what Queensland was doing. We were hearing what South Australia was doing. We were hearing what the Commonwealth was saying, you know, yeah. what Romo was coming on and saying to us, you know, in, in his daily uh, briefings. And all up until there, it was about the moral compass, Mark, you're right. And it was about, you know, would a, look, would a landlord look at this? Would a landlord not look at this? And, and vice versa, is a tenant being reasonable? Or are they just taking... Um, you know, advantage of the situation. Yeah. We heard many, many stories of that on both sides of the equation. Yeah. So it's really bad. But you know what these what the legislation that, that's been passed and is in actually says there's a, there's obviously that prohibition on landlords from giving a termination notice uh, due to rental arrears. Obviously termination notices can be given for other reasons. Uh, however, there's a bit of a loophole there. You can still ask a tenant to leave a property, but you can't kick them out on rent. 
Is that what you're saying? Absolutely correct, but you can't give any termination notice for 60 days following the 15th of April. Okay, so it doesn't matter what the issue is, there's no termination notices for the from 60 days. So if you look 15th of April, roughly you just go 15th of June. It's, I think 60 days is actually 13th, but you know, let's go with the 15th of June uh, and say you can't give any termination notices during that period for anything. Okay, because okay. basically they, they don't want people moving. They don't want people packing up trucks and cars and grabbing friends to help them move house. And, yeah. You know, Rosie, we've got bills asking, is the legislation temporary? Yes, yes, we've got a six month. This is six months. Okay, so come September, wherever that brings us to. Let's let's wait and see, I guess. Okay. Uh, if it, yes, know, it's temporary though. You know, everywhere you look for what is the, uh, the COVID-19 period that they keep talking about, particularly in commercial, uh, yeah. we start looking at commercial property, they talk very much in that mandatory code of conduct. They talk about the COVID-19 period. Now, when you dig into that and look at the Small Business uh, Commissioner's website, you can actually find out that the, they're defining the COVID-19 period as the period of time that job keeper allowances are being paid. Now, at this stage, they're being paid for six month period. So again, that looks like it's that six month period that they're looking at the COVID-19 I guess, relief packages all around. And so okay. whilst this doesn't have an end date, because I guess it can't, because who knows where we'll be in two months, three months, six months, they've said COVID-19 period. So, okay. you know, there's, you know there's, there's a whole range of, so there's that 60 days you can't issue termination notices. But yep. this, is, this is only for what they refer to as an impacted tenant. So... You know, there's there's two two so points. What, what, so what does that mean? Okay, so when you when when you talk about what is an impacted tenant, uh, it's a household. You've got to look at it from a household perspective, and it's where a household needs to demonstrate that they're impacted. So demonstrate meaning they have to provide you with evidence. You meaning the agent. Okay, so there's it's where a household has one or more rent paying members of a household of lost employment or income. Uh, or a reduction. So it's not about total loss of income or a reduction in income due to COVID-19 business closures or stand downs. Okay, so it's not because they just lost their job in January for yeah. whatever reason. It's about they've lost their job due to COVID-19 or there's one or more rent paying members of a household that had to stop working due to the fact that they've either got COVID or they're caring for someone in a family or close family member uh, that has COVID. So their care responsibilities or they've actually got it. So okay, so rent paying member, is that a leaseholder? Not necessarily. You think about what's on a lease. And yeah. might, you, the lease might just be in one person's name, but you might have also written onto that lease that there's also another person and a couple of kids. Yeah. So that other person's on the lease, but the, I mean, they've written on as being an approved person to be living in the premises. Uh, so they are a rent paying member of the household. Obviously the kids aren't. However, if they were adults. Yeah, pay rent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that word is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Your dog pays rent. Um, Everyone pays rent. <laughs> no free ride. And, no and free ride, no max. <laughs> no free ride. Um, so yeah, it, it comes down to, you've got to, every single case you're going to look at is going to be different because every landlord situation is different. Yeah. Every tenant situation is different and got to help our, our property managers is all I can say is because this is a time when they, there is no rule of one size fits all because it is people that are self-managing. I know Mark and Michael Bergio did a segment on it the other day, you know, for those people that are self-managing, like, you know, if you ever um, were trying to save money on your management fees, that's the, one of the only reasons I can imagine why you would self-manage. Yeah. Um, wouldn't we're that be tricky it, now? We're calling it the hurt room. Yeah. Well, it is. I mean, I mean, yeah, I agree with you. Why would anybody self-manage? I mean, I know a reasonable amount about property, I, I would hope. And, you know, I'd be the last person who would self-manage. You know, yeah. I, I try and find the most professional agent I can find. And um... <laughs> you know, it, it's all great when it's all going well, right? And it's own, it's like it's like um, uh, home and contents insurance. Yeah. 
it's excruciating when you've got to pay out every month or every year for your policy, yeah. right? Until you actually need it one day and then you're like, shit, why didn't we take, a, you know, the higher policy with the better insurance company? And it's the same thing yeah. with getting a, a property manager to manage your property. Thank goodness, thank goodness our property managers are super experienced yeah. and they've been here for years and years. And they're actually, they're almost, I said to Mark, I almost feel like they're actually set up to be able to um, handle this kind of situation. Not that any of us knew that it was going to happen, but my God, it's been quite the task. Absolutely. The Rosie, task. on that self-managed thing that Lisa mentioned, we get a lot of calls from <laughs> so owners that are self-managed and they ask us for advice at the moment. And uh, one of the ones they called up about, which I thought was very interesting, that I'd love to know if you had some input to, and if it was similar to my answer. So it's a restaurant, these clients that, that, that um, the landlord uh, owns a beautiful premises, restaurant owner. The restaurant owner has chosen not to work. So the restaurant owner, uh, is saying, you know what, I don't really want to do Uber Eats or Takeaway or Deliveroo and uh, I don't want to do it. So I just want to open in six months time and uh, I think you should not charge me any rent for six months. Um, now, I've got a pretty good idea of the answer, but I'd love to not influence you and ask you for the answer. Well, I think the first thing Your is... Your interpretation of the law. Yeah. Well, the te every tenant has a lease which is a legal document and you have you have to pay your rent. I mean, full stop. And so that, that comes, I guess, as the first premise. Then comes in, you know, let, let's put aside the, uh, the tenant's moral compass right at this point in time and, and say, okay, they have a legal obligation to pay their rent. So what they're saying is I'm not even going to try and mitigate my loss on this point. So I would say, well, look, you wouldn't, you would have to say, I mean, if they were in gym and had to close down and couldn't do anything, then that might be a different situation. But they've been, you know, they can do takeaways. They can do your Uber Eats, and as you said. So they're yeah. not mitigating their losses in any way. So they're saying, well, okay, if you did all of that, uh, maybe your income might be down 60% or 70%. So that's when the mandatory code of conduct kicks in on commercial property where you pay proportionate to what your loss is. And you can say, well, you're choosing that part. If you, if you actually went down the path of mitigating your losses and did Uber Eats or whatever, you'd probably make 40% of what you were making before. Therefore, we'll cut your rent by 60%. And of that 60% that we cut, 30, you know, half of that uh, will be a you know, uh, a rent-free period and the other half is you have to enter into a repayment plan. So, I mean, that would be the type of negotiation that would have to happen. And I'd say, you know, at that point, you would be taking it straight to the Small Business Commission for mediation. Small, okay, so that's interesting. So, is so that, is that what happens? So, Rose, the small business, residential goes off to fair trading. Okay. So, is that what happens when a landlord and a tenant albeit residential or commercial, cannot come to an arrangement? When they can't come to an arrangement and they've, you know, walked down that path of negotiation or they're refusing to even walk down that path of negotiation because, you know, I've heard plenty of stories of, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not paying and I'm not giving you any evidence of that I'm, a, that I'm an impacted tenant and I'm not doing anything. That's if it's a residential, it goes off to the New South Wales Fair Trading Dispute Resolution Service. Who are still open. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's another that's another fallacy that is going around. Yes. That fair one. trading is it's not operating so due to COVID, but they well and truly are, aren't they? So intelligent. Because yeah. that started with uh, NCAT saying they weren't doing any face to face hearings. Ah, uh, uh, yes. So it's all okay. done. It's all done over the phone, which I'm not. You're either considering it on okay. paper. Remember what Lisa Jemison said the other week on when when you interviewed her. She made it very clear that. Uh, they might not be doing the face-to-face -face ones, but they're certainly doing it based on the papers in front of them or they're doing phone ones. So, you know, they're, they're still doing hearings. Obviously, they're not doing anything with rent terminations for rental arrears in the next 60 days because yeah. they're not allowed. But even before you get to the NCAT point, fair trading itself, so before you get to that jurisdiction of doing something in a tribunal, fair trading officers are actually doing 
uh, their dispute resolution service. Now, this is nothing new. They've had this, you know, the property management or the rentals dispute resolution service in there for years. Okay. Bill's got a question. Yeah. He said, do you mean NCAT? No, I don't. No, I don't. Um, so the, Bill, Bill's question was, do you mean NCAT? Yeah, no, I don't mean NCAT. Okay, who, who do you mean? For the, for the dispute resolution service, it's, yeah. it's actually fair trading officers doing that. Okay. And whilst funded through fair trading and all those things, it's a jurisdiction, it's a tribunal, uh, and you know one section of that deals with, with tenancy issues. Do you, okay, do you, so, so just do you apply, on that. What, apply the same way? Do you apply the same it's, way? No, it's, it's like a complaints system, and you, and you lodge it through on the fair trading website. And okay. I, it's actually quite difficult to find the link on their site, but they're, they're fixing that apparently in the next couple of days I heard this morning. But I'm happy to send you that link and you can forward it out to anyone who needs it. So what part are NCAT playing in this? Well, if something goes, if it can't then be resolved at that dispute resolution level, with trading, it can. It, then you make an, a formal application to NCAT. Okay, all right. So during that, they're not looking at termination issues about rent payment until 60 days after the 15th of April. So mid-June. They're not looking at this till June anyway, then cat. So, yep. you know, and um, so you're better off sitting down with a, a mediator from Fair Trading who's actually going to look at the look at the issues. And they're going to want to see evidence from both sides, why the landlord is suffering and why the tenant is an impacted tenant. So and if so you can't get to that. But this is really critical information because what happened was, you know, when the um, that that six months non termination legislation came out, yeah. I think the message that went out to tenants, I think, in my opinion, was that they felt that they didn't need to pay rent and they cannot be terminated. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, at the same time, the the new legislation from last week says that you know anyone that doesn't pay rent won't be listed on the any tenant can't be listed on any tenancy databases for this COVID period. On a, TIA, is that what you're referring to? To to ticker or TRA, yeah. 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 Okay. So for those of you guys that are watching, ticker is like the um uh portal that we use if we need to blacklist a tenant, um this is pre-COVID, if we need to blacklist a tenant, we can put them onto a site called Ticker. Yep. Um, there's a few sites and that's where tenants can actually get blacklisted. And you, you don't want to end up there as a tenant. It's not looking good for your next application. Um, but that's not allowed to be done right now. So, But Mark and I had this conversation this morning. Yeah, we talk a lot. And <laughs> the conversation was at 5.30 this morning that if tenants are not paying for whatever reason, can't pay, don't want to pay, whatever the situation is, that still shows up on the rental ledger. Absolutely. Which is set in stone. Now, a rental ledger is not something that can be changed. Yep. If you have not paid your rent, it will show up on your ledger. Yes. Now, that can't be used against you when you apply next time round if you were unable to pay for whatever reason or chose not to pay. However, the facts are the facts, Rosie. That ledger... Really, if you're a landlord and you're seeing that someone was struggling to pay their rent, at, you know, a couple of months ago, you kind of going to still raise your eyebrows, aren't you? And say, well, I'm worried if you couldn't pay it then, what's changed that you can all of a sudden pay it now? That's right. And, and again, we go back to, to Mark's comment on Moral Compass. Why didn't you pay it at the, you know, why, why didn't you enter into a repayment plan and not pay it at the end? You know, when, yeah. when you track it, at work or... or no. Yeah, if you were getting JobKeeper or JobSeeker. So, well, okay. so in summary, people's COVID ledgers for rent and people's COVID ledgers for mortgage repayments, I personally think will be reviewed in time in years forward. So if I'm going for a loan in December this year, yes. if I'm going for a new property in December this year, yeah. I can't I cannot imagine that if I've got a glowing ledger as a tenant or a glowing um, mortgage repayments schedule for a bank, I reckon that's going to help me in my application. Yeah. So they're saying it can't be used against you, but I sure as hell think it can be used for you. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I mean, when it comes down to the, 
comes, you know, when when landlords in the future are making decisions based obviously on agents' recommendations um, about who to take, then, you know, there, there will be. How did they go? Have they got their job back? How long have they been back in their job? You know, all of those questions will come because, well, they're already part of your application process anyway. So all of that information will be gathered. Okay, what about this one? I'm in hospitality. No, they can't. Don't give them the property. This is in December. Don't give them the property. They're both in hospitality. Yes, yeah. yes, but their rental ledger through COVID, they never missed a payment. Oh, okay, give them the property. So is that going to assist in forming an opinion? I would think yes. Yeah, I think so. Yes, and the same thing goes for banks. Obviously, sure. it's not about legislation there. It's about people's perceptions. That's right. Yeah. And the same thing goes for the banks. You freeze those mortgage repayments. On the other side, you know, one of the banks turns around and says, you know, they 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 froze the payment. I mean, that's going to that could potentially form an opinion if you're looking to go for a loan. Yeah. Or could, as Mark said, it could work. It could work for I you. Could, if you yeah, not. It could work, work for you if you if you're able to continue with that. I so, agree. Mind you, there's there's plenty of stories going around about banks not being too helpful either. So you know, that's a that's yeah. a I'll tell you one of the best pieces of information that people can look at, and this is good for tenants, for landlords, for agents, is on the Fair Trading website. When you go in and look at under housing, then housing and property, then you click on renting, and then the very first thing at the top of their page is COVID-19. And you click on that, and they've got a flow chart in there, which basically goes through, and I've got the flow chart in front of me here. I and love the flow chart. <laughs> yeah, I have a good flow chart. I get excited. I get quite excited by flow charts. Flow, uh, the word flow is you guys so know progressive. Each other. I'm going to leave. Flow yeah. charts, charts, graphs, all that. Man. Yeah, love it. Show, <laughs> show me your flow chart. I'll, I'll show you yours if you show me mine. But anyway, no, that's I'll, I'll post it in the comment section. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, you know, it actually goes through, you know, step one. Is the tenant actually impacted by COVID-19? It goes through all the things that we've already talked about, you know, whether their their household income is down and also the household income inclusive of government assistance if that's reduced by 25%. That's what they're looking for to be an impacted tenant. Okay, there's a big one. So that's inclusive of your job keeper or your job seeker or whatever government assistance is coming. So it's about the household income so that's everybody who's bringing dollars into that that household. Got it. Plus the plus the government assistance. If that's now reduced twenty five percent from what it was before, that's when they're an impacted tenant. Okay. Okay. So if that comes down as a yes, then you go down. Okay, there's a moratorium. Six months, you can't be evicted. Sixty days, you can't even issue any sort of termination notice for other reasons either. Until the, about the fifteenth of June. June. Well, the, yeah, yeah. It, Bill's got that question. So from the 15th of June, you can knock out a 60-day notice period plus postage. Well, everything's gone to 90 days. Everything's so, gone to 90 days. Yeah. Termination yeah. for 90 days. But if they are not an impacted tenant, okay. the, mor the six-month moratorium on terminations is off the table. Okay. The moratorium does not apply, is what it says here on the, on the flow chart. The tenant will need to keep paying rent or risk termination of the tenancy. So, Rosie, we um, had five questions for this um, for this thirty-minute session, and we didn't make it past one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem, isn't it? Um, I, I told you that would be. Welcome to our life, everybody. Welcome <laughs> to our life. This is what the last two months has been like. It is. And what else? Yeah. So, Michael Edwards made a very, very interesting comment before. He said. We're all wearing the same glasses. I think that's... Thank you, Michael. Um, I always thought he was quite perceptive. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't um, need to wear glasses. I'm so, I'm so... I've had such a busy day today that I actually can't read the notes that are in front of me. Have you got little hearts on the side of yours like mine? See that? No. People that wear glasses are more intelligent. That's Just like a, Is that like what judges wear? They get the wig? So, yeah. like, when you're the principal of the college, like you get down the end of the nose like that. Oh, oh my God. That's wow. sad librarian. You've got a halo happening. You look like you're, like, angelic from Australian College of Professionals <laughs> Angel. Me. 
Yeah. Like Charlie's Angels. Okay. Like Charlie's Angels. We're going to whip through these ones. How do agents work through all of these issues? They are so confusing for landlords and tenants. What is the best way? What's Honestly, the I think the best thing is to for agents to look at the two flow charts that are on the Fair Trading website. They are absolutely, you know, we won't go back to how much we love flow charts, but they're actually really, really useful. Okay. And the information that's on there is, is really good. And it's not, and it'll be good for yeah. agents. We'll put the link. I've done amazing things we'll, with we'll, these flow charts the last couple of weeks. We'll they pop, just, we'll pop a link up. But I reckon it should be sent out to, you know, when landlords and tenants start actually looking at, you know, what is, what, what their situation is, send them a copy of this. Send them a copy of that flow chart and say, okay, this is what, this is how we're going to be making our decisions. And making a note, that's how important. So you actually, you're actually setting a framework for them. So when people are actually given a framework to start with, they're, they're able to make better and better informed decisions. So give them that sort of framework because, as I said, every single situation is different. And, and there's lots of new forms out, all the providers of the forms. You know, uh, uh, Jemison Fisher have actually written a new form for EAC and it's about a repayment plan. So wow. you can use that. So, you know, whatever your form provider is as an agency, uh, then have a look at what they offer. But I know uh, Gemfish have done the. I, I had a look at theirs today. How, uh, how can people get that, Rosie? Well, you know, it depends on who your form provider is. The the one that um, that uh, Jemison Fisher did comes via EAC because they do the forms for EAC. ADL, I've seen all. The, I've had a look at all their new forms today, and because they were released as of this morning. And again, they've got repayment plans. They've got new termination notices that bring in all the ninety day. Things rather than the 30, the 60, the 14, the, all of those sorts of things, or the 30 and the 60, really, um, and bringing that into the 90-day termination notices. So, and again, these are for the COVID-19 period only. This is not forever and a day. Yep. This is just for now. Yeah. So, and however long now is, we don't know, but yeah. it's just for now. And look, I think everyone's doing a really good job. And Padam's made a comment here saying the landlord doesn't care government has no money to pay rent so what help from the government um there is help out there and we understand that there is a small little group of people that are not getting any assistance at all 320 billion dollars of help but you know there there is a lot of assistance that is has come um you know everyone's way and um, a friend of ours made a comment this morning and said you know his daughter that was a casual worker um for 18 months is now getting like double or triple the amount of pay than what she would normally get. And I'm sure that's the case with a lot of, a lot of people have got more money in their pocket than what they did have six months ago and they're spending less. But it just, you know, I know what I'm saying, like it's some people just don't qualify and that makes it really hard. Yeah, some people don't qualify, yeah. Yeah, that is some people don't qualify. Uh, and you, know, it, it's, you look around and you qualify for some things and you don't qualify for others. And, you know, you're business owners, I'm a business owner, and you look around and you go, yeah, well, I qualify for that. I don't qualify for this. But yeah, That's a good point. I was about to say that. Some yeah. businesses aren't qualifying, yeah. some tenants aren't qualifying, some yeah. people are just not qualifying. Say, oh, yeah, the New South Wales, you know, government have given out a, you know, a, a package for small businesses. But the more I turn around, there's more and more businesses that don't qualify for that. Well, Lisa's lucky she qualified. <laughs> and that I don't have to pay rent to Mark. <laughs> and listen, let's get into some really good stuff. Tell us some goss, Rosie. We want to know. So you are the eyes and the ears on the ground with regards to real estate stories and agents. What are some of the tell, tell us some goss. What what do you see out there? Like what are some of the horrendous mistakes that you've seen that real estate agents and real estate agencies no names, but, Mate, you know, yeah, just we're not give names. nothing we, specific, what, but, you know, just like broadly, what are the things over the years that brought a smile to yeah. your face to finish look, off on a light, you, on a light where note? Where you've just like been shaking your head going, really? Yeah, look, we, we do that almost daily. We shake our heads. But, you know, some of the, in the last 12 months, possibly the most common mistake, and I just don't get it, is people who don't renew their licences or their certificates on time. Well, certificates is off the table now because people have got that for four years. But for licences, you've got one renewal date, you know, and it's like driving your car. You've got to have a licence. Yeah. 
send you an email, fair trading send you a, a, a text. And, you know, the best story I think I've had in the last few months is the agent who thought he was the licensee in charge of a business and has been touting himself as the licensee in charge of a business and had let his license lapse not one, not two years ago, but 10 years ago. So that oh was... My God. And then, and then found it difficult to understand that he actually needed to do something. He just thought fair trading would just give it back. Just because, yeah, there you go, have it back. 10 years? 10 yeah. years. Wow. So... Give me some other good ones. Oh, another good one is the agent who paid for their license renewal using a trust account check. So knowing that the, most people know that trust account money is, you know, not... not money. money. So it's the client's money. And Landlord's yeah. money. Tenant's yeah. money. Landlord's oh, money. It's not your money. And they're using someone else's money to pay for their license. Yeah. And I mean, look, it could have been a mistake. They just picked up the wrong checkbook for those people who still yeah. use checkbooks. But... Yeah. You know, I mean, get a pair of glasses like the three of us and match <laughs> up and have a look at what your checkbook says. Yeah. Rather, and, or, you know, I mean, there's classic stories. I haven't, I've only seen one ever that have paid their, you know, golf club renewal membership out of the trust account. Um, you know, we've had, um, we had oh, the funniest story I heard from an agent. They were saying that they, they work in a, a set of, you know, a small little block of shops and out of the five little strip of retail shops in the little suburb, three of the shops in that strip of five are real estate agents. One's, I think, a fish shop and the other one was like a butcher, I think, and um, covering all bases, I guess. And uh, a, a lady went into the real estate agency and she said, I'm here to pay my rent. And she had, and she pulled out the checkbook and she was an older lady and um, they didn't know who she was and she said her name and she said the address of the property. And they said, look, we don't manage that property. She absolutely insisted and was getting really, really irate and really, really upset and agitated and insisted that, she, that they take the check and they give, that they give a receipt for it and all of the above. And they, and they just thought, we, you know, in the end of the day, they, she was getting really agitated. So they took the check and they gave her a receipt and thought, we don't, have this property on our books we don't have this you know i thought you know so they followed her out and sort of watched her walk down the street and off she went and an agent from one of the other agencies walked out and went um that's our one of our tenants and they went now we know where to put the money so I mean, <laughs> thankfully those three agents all talked to each other which was really nice and they just went yeah right let's do a transaction here and and you know here's the check <laughs> Um, that, that, that's, a, that's always um, a good one. I mean, yeah, one of my favourites for agents is um, there were, we were running a trust accounting class, which is always fun. Everybody loves going and doing trust accounting oh, classes. I love, I love that. I've got a calculator <laughs> sitting on the table right here. Look at this. I loved I love the it. class that I did with John. <laughs> trust accounting. <laughs> it was so much fun that I want to do it all over again. Yes. Um, yeah. Pay me the money. We had a, um, yeah, exactly. We had a, um, a trust account class running and two of the students became quite friendly during the trust account class and after lunch on the second day, they didn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> Did they pass or fail? Um, ultimately, they came back separately for different trust account classes, but apparently they hooked up and didn't come back again. So, you know, the day three, day four, no sign of them. People are asking where can they sign up to that class, Rosie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure that it was the uh, encouraged by the trainer, but uh, certainly they uh, they got into it. So yeah, look, we see lots of uh, different behaviours, and we look they're all, they're the funny ones. But you know, there's lots of agents who are unfortunately doing things that might not be correct. Shagging and trust account. Sometimes they don't, and. Um, you know, it, it's a matter of there's plenty of legislation out there. It's a hard gig to get it all right. Um, yeah. But it's a matter of, and I go back again, I love what you said right at the beginning, Mark. It's about each person's moral compass. Yeah. Basically, as an agent, you're trying to do the right thing. And even through this COVID issue, if you're trying to do the right thing, odds on you'll, probably, you'll, be, you'll get to a decent uh, negotiation point, which is what 
th at this very point in time, it's probably you probably want to close off on on this point um, or soon. That um, this is the opportunity for agents to show what you're really skilled at. Yeah, well said. Because agents, the Lord. You know, at the end of the day, your communicators, your yeah. facilitators, your negotiators. Show oh my God! Honestly, never Rosie, a true word. I swear, never a true word. No one knows what they're doing. No one knows what they're doing. Like the prime minister is getting up there. He does yeah. not have the answer. It has not happened before. So I think we're all, like he says, we're all in it together. So there is this uh, uncomfortable, comfortable now that we're getting, yeah. with, you know, because these answers, like, really, how do we know? How do we know? The legislation and all that. No, that's exactly right. But it's so true. I mean, those people that are skilled, and the same thing goes for sales agents. Oh, um, managers, principals, you know, those people that were really ahead of the curve, um, they're, they're actually okay. I mean, you know, you, you asked me before, you, you know, I think, you know, you were saying, oh, you're working from home. I'm like, oh, my God, we're so busy at the moment. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, um, I think those people that were, as I said, ahead of the curve um, are going to come out of this okay. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I mean, I think it's now, it's the time for agents to show their real skills rather than, you know, sometimes it can be a bit of a, a churn and, and, and just, you know, yet let's do the same thing again and again, which is a bit different for you guys at Novak, of course, but many agents, you know, they're just doing the same, same and, and getting the results and doing it well. But yeah. I think now's the chance to show the real skills that, that, real, that good real estate agents have, whether they're in property management or in sales, it's about that, I guess it's the, as I said, it, it's about the negotiation, the facilitation and the connection, the connection that they can have with somebody and have that communication point. And if you're doing that, you're negotiating an outcome that is going to be fair on both sides. And as ScoMo said to us, we've all got to wear a bit of pain. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, so crazy, there's a gentleman uh, in the bedroom next to you uh, and he's, oh. mate, he's, he's, <laughs> writ, he's written a message on here saying, Just, bring, bring it on. So it's a John, a John Sullivan, bring bring it on. He's written that message to you. So I'm feeling a bit awkward. Feet up in front of the TV, probably watching what Skyro has got to say. You know you, what you it is. You know what? Surname. I know what John got bring excited on. about. Bring it on. It was two words. Bring it on. John. Trust accounting. That was what got him excited. Yeah. Trust accounting. My man. <laughs> Your man, just, <laughs> your man wants you to bring it on and he's in the room next door. We better now, let you go so you can... Just, uh, just quickly, we're going to wrap it. up, guys. Uh, if anyone's got any other questions, now's the time to ask. There's been lots and lots of questions coming through. Um, sorry but just we to wrap answer up, all of them. Please, if you want to flick any through, through to me, because I can't see the questions, but if you want to flick any through to me that you want me to answer later, that's more than happy to. Thank you. They're, they're, they're all coming through here. But where can people, if people want to do their um license yes if people want to sign up and get into the real estate industry yes they can contact you guys you guys are the best trainers in the number one in the world without a doubt how do we know because we use you yeah and um, i can tell you now there's courses and there's courses and my other life used to be in private education and um i can tell you now there is a big difference between training institutions what you can get online your 99 dollars sign up license course and what you guys are doing are miles apart and if right now the skills that we were just talking about if that isn't evidence of this then um i don't know what is and i'll tell you what now for those guys who particularly the ones in real estate or anyone on job seeker there's actually government funding we have access to some government funding where they can actually do the whole licensing course uh, if they're on, if they're a job seeker, ah, you know, for two hundred and forty dollars. So yeah, obviously there's some eligibility criteria, but you know, basically there's and to get into the industry, what does that normally cost. So oh, about three thousand. Oh wow. my god, that's huge. Table, but yes, yeah, you, so you can't just get a certificate these days. You need that license to operate as a real estate agent. You to start with, and then you've got four years to get your license. So you can work your way. You start with the first module, but if you come in on that, on that. If you're a job seeker, now's the time to get into it. Whether you get a job even halfway through the course, doesn't matter. At the point of time of enrolment, you're in for $240. If As John would say, bring it wow, on. Wow, that is bring unreal. On. That is unreal. So guys, we can't... 
but we cannot recommend this college highly enough. Yes. Um, you know, if you're looking for getting your license, getting your certificate, whatever it is that you want to do, upskill, do some of your modules. These guys do it. They do online as well as face to face, or face to face will be back soon enough. Yeah, we'll um, do so webinars to cover up for that. Like we've got our leadership and management course we're running via webinars in the evening. So, you yeah. know, we're doing lots of different things. You know what? You guys were doing this before. It's not like all of a sudden no, you have to work it out now. Yes. So, you know, it's um, it's it's nothing new. It's just more people are now doing online. And we used to call people the online refugees. They hook in online because they say, yeah, we'll do that at night time. And yeah. then turn around and go, you know what? We want to come to class. And <laughs> Real estate is the type of industry where people need to be in front. You know, those of us in the industry, uh, we all like that interaction. That's why we're in this industry. And also, I did my CPD points with you, Rosie, not yeah. very long ago, and they were the best scones I've ever eaten in my entire life. <laughs> I haven't forgotten them. I know, I personally didn't make those, but I do make a good scone, I'm just saying. Hold you to it. We're going to hold you to it. All right, guys. I think that's it. I think that's a wrap. That's a wrap. So, yeah. guys, um, I'll do some notes on this and put in there. Rosie will have a look at the comments and put some comments in there. Yeah. We'll do a bit of we'll do a bit of next a bit of work over the next twenty four hours on those comments. Yeah, helping people out. We'll put up those PDFs um, from We're the government on here. We're going to put up some links to the fair trading to, to links, stuff as well. Fair trading comments yeah. and uh, and guys, I do have to say, legislation in what we've been through. Uh, is is uh, is an anchor, but at the end of the day, there's a boat that's floating in the water. That boat is the moral compass, uh, work ethic, uh, and, and our true north. So I think as as tenants, landlords, and uh, and uh, real estate agents, the, you know, I know we've got that anchor that we that we're all relying on. But at the end of the day, um, we've all just got to get through it. Eh? I actually just and just finishing up those reforms actually have come along at a really good time because I think anyone working in the real estate industry right now realizes more than ever we need to know our stuff yeah we do we never have before because I don't think this will be the last pandemic we're ever going to have I think we're going right. to be going through a lot of deep water um and it's more important than ever so I think John's going to create a pandemic tonight Rosie <laughs> John just wants his dinner Mark that's all John wants <laughs> Oh, is that what oh, that's it? what he was calling it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel oh, awkward. Man, I, I feel like more awkward. <laughs> I thought the red lipstick was for us, but that's all right. Rosie, thank you so much for joining us. We love you. You guys are the best. Always here for the ride with you guys. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. See thank you, guys. I hope we helped everyone tonight. See ya. See ya. Bye. Bye.